Okay, so hey everyone, welcome to Learn Competitive TF2 with me, Mr. Slen. I'm streaming to you live from my kitchen in Los Angeles, California, and um, I just wanted to teach you guys about TF2 a little bit. Um, I'll start by introducing myself. I play Medic in the Intermediate Division, and I've been playing this game for about four years. And uh, this series I'm starting is going to be all about you know, learning competitive 6v6 TF2, and for my very first episode, I decided I was going to talk about what I know best, which is the Medic class. And um, let's just get right into it. Medic seems to be one of those classes that everyone sorts of, sort of tries when they first start getting into competitive TF2. It's kind of easy. You, c you don't have to focus on aiming. You can follow people around and you can just heal them. And you don't need that much game sense. You don't need to know that much about the game. You just heal people and follow people around. And that's fun. But what makes Medic really hard is you have to learn how to multitask. And I wanted to go over a couple points. Uh, for you guys. See, the problem with Medic is there's so many different skills you need to learn and at times it's like juggling and like trying to keep all the balls in the air and so I'm gonna go over four points and uh, the first one is going to be distancing. So, I'll show you right here. I created a little video for you guys. Um, let's see if this works. Production quality is going to be super high because this is my very first episode. Alright, so it looks like this. Alright, so most people when they play Medic, they end up really close to the person they're healing in front of them, and uh, that's really bad. But what you want to do is you want to kind of back up a little bit, and you want to stay at this kind of range right here. And when you're at this kind of distance, this will protect you a lot better than being closer um, to the target you're healing. And see how far away I am right now? I'm extremely far away from the target that I'm healing. So what you want to do is you just want to, let's say they're shooting at your pocket soldier, they'll shoot at him, and if you took a lot less damage, if you stay farther away, and I can keep backing up here, and look how far I am right now. I'm really far away, it just disconnects right now as I'm at the entrance of the house. And it'll reconnect just a little bit closer, right about here. So, that's kind of what you want to do. So that's my first tip um, for Medic. And, yeah. So, that was number one. Um, number two is going to be focusing on uh, crit heals. So, crit heals is all about, you know, how you basically when you stay out of the fight for longer periods of time you will get a faster healing rate so medics heal at a flat healing rate and I'll show you right here yeah so when you're in combat you're going to only heal for 24 health per second but when you're out of combat you'll heal for 72 health per second and that kind of ramps up over time so you start at um, 24 health per second, but then after 10 seconds, it'll start ramping up up to a maximum of 72 health per second at 15 seconds. So, first point, distancing. Second point is crit heals, and you really need to make sure that you're managing crit heals, who, keeping track of like who's staying in and out of the fight, and that way you can pick the right target to heal, because it's a lot faster to heal someone with crit heals than it is to heal someone who doesn't have crit heals. So, um, let's say your teammate gets hurt and they run back for a health pack, then you know when they come back to the fight, you know that they're going to have crit heals because they just ran away and they're out of the fight for a long period of time, and then they come back and you just tag them, and uh, you just heal the shit out of them. <laughs> so, um, the third point I want to go over is uh, heal order. So, where did I put it? Here. What you really want to do when you're healing is you need to have a specific heal order where you know who you're going to heal first and who you're going to heal last. So the first person that you always want to heal are the people who are going to be running away from you. So the first person that you heal is the roamer because he's going to be, uh, well the last person you heal is going to be the pocket because he's right next to you. So you start with the roamer and then scouts run away from you as well so you want to heal your scouts next then you heal your demo man because he's the largest most important person right here I made him extra big because he's really important that you heal him eventually and then the last person is your pocket because he is basically always going to be next to you he's always going to be holding nearby so another key point that I want to make though is that this is only when holding and holding means that the other team isn't pushing or you're not pushing the other team so when it comes to actually fighting, you go to heal order 2, which is just healing whoever's in front. So the way this kind of works is 
when you're holding, people aren't taking damage and you can manage crit heals a lot easier. But when you're fighting, it's important to heal whoever's in front because they're the ones taking damage. And it may seem like the person in back, or you might want to follow this heal order right here. It may, f it may seem like you want to follow this heal order even when you're fighting because these people are eventually going to leave you. But what happens is, is if you do that, the people who are in front taking damage are going to die. And the way I explain this is through the concept of baiting. So imagine if you have a soldier and a medic right next to each other. But the soldier, so let's say you're, you're a soldier yourself and you know, a soldier approaches you and you start shooting him. If he starts with like 300 health and you get him down to like 120, he's really lit, right? And suddenly the medic enters the fight. Now the medic is a juicy target and you really want to, you know, kill the medic. But the soldier is 120, so who are you going to shoot first? You're going to keep shooting the soldier that you've already started getting down. You started whittling him down and you know he's so close to dying. You're just going to keep shooting that soldier even if there's a medic right next door. Even if the medic is right in front of that soldier, you might even keep shooting the soldier because he's just so lit. Maybe he's got 50 health and you need to kill him right away. And so that's kind of the idea when it comes to baiting is whoever's in front, whoever's closest to the enemy is going to get targeted first. So as a medic, you want to take advantage of that. You know that the guy in front is almost like your tank. If you ever play um, MMOs, you have like a tank who just sits in front and takes up all the damage. You kind of want to heal that guy. You always want to be healing the tank. Even if you have your squishier damaging players around the outside, you want to keep healing the tank. So um, whoever happens to be in front, you want to be able to heal him. But at the same time, you kind of got to keep in mind like crit heals in the back of your mind. It's like, so when it comes to heal order, it's a bit of between managing the heal order, but then also remembering who has crit, crit heals and like through experience, you'll know who you should be healing. So uh, the last point I wanted to go over was, if I can remember what it is, it's following your pocket, that's what it is. Okay, so, um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, uh, I live in LA, and I go to Disneyland a lot, and uh, here's a picture of me with my friend at Disneyland. Let's see if I can bring it up. Here. So, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Disneyland. They have this um, Buzz Lightyear ride where you just kind of, you, you're sitting in this, like, little car, right? And the car just kind of goes around through the track, and then you have these little guns, right? And you're just like shooting little targets with like in like invaders on them, and you kind of just keep shooting these targets, but you have no control of where you're going. The kind of the cart just kind of moves around, and you can you have a little like joystick that you can spin the cart around, but really all you can do is just shoot the targets. And um, that's what I think about when I think of medic is it's all about you know you can't. Um, a lot, a lot of new medics like to chase heals, and chasing heals means that you <laughs> you follow you, you follow your pocket around at first, but then suddenly this guy needs health, or like the demo man needs health. So now you follow him over, and you're trying to heal him and keep the demo man up. But then now the scout needs health, and then you turn around and you're like, where'd my pocket go? I completely lost track of where I am. And um, as a starting medic, that that can be really difficult. Is just kind of how do I how do I follow the pocket but not necessarily heal him all the time? So you just gotta keep in mind like where the pocket's going. And you have to follow him around all the time, but without, you don't necessarily have to heal just him because it's just like having the gun and you're following the track. You're just following that pocket around and then you just heal whoever comes to you. Um, a big part of this game is like positioning and like where you position your combo because the, the combo is like the center of your team. So you need to make sure you're always following the pocket around. You're the center of the team and then let people come to you for heals. Um, so those are kind of my points that I want to make is really keep track of distancing, making sure you stay far away from the person that you're healing so you don't take double damage. So like if someone spams in and you take a sticky, both of you would take stickies, the sticky damage. But if you stay farther away, then only the pocket will take damage. That, that's really important as a medic. Um, the next point, crit heals. Make sure that you know in your mind who is staying in the fight, but who's also out of the fight so you can heal them at the faster rate. And then the last one, uh, the second the last one is the heal order, which is, you know, when you're in fights, keep healing people who are going to run away from you, but then heal the people who are next to you last. While if you're in fighting, you want to be healing people who are in front, taking the damage, because they're the ones that are getting, that are like your tanks. And then 
follow your pocket and make sure that you stay with the major majority of your team. Now, there's some exceptions to the rule there where the pocket may jump away from you, but generally you want to stay with your pocket, keep healing him, and sort of follow him around just like you're on a track. So, um, I just want to keep it short, 15 minutes at most, and I wanted to uh, open up some Q&A and see what you guys had to say. So, <laughs> oh yeah, so like I said, I'm live in my kitchen, and my roommate, my shirtless roommate, is cooking so that's that's how it works around here <laughs> yeah no you have to it's at the point where i just play so much that they just kind of um ignore me i think hopefully but yeah these are my pictures here no not this one this one right here and yeah so i almost um I'll just go to your questions right now. How do you recommend how to air surf as a medic? Um, air surfing is really basic, actually. It's it's all about you have to move your mouse and the A or D key at the same time. So if I want to move left, I hold A and move my mouse to the left. While if I want to move to the right, I hold D and move to the right. And um, I can show you an example of that right now. Let me hop in. Um, but a really good way to practice air strafing is through surf maps, and I do surf maps a lot. Um, my movement isn't exactly the best, so I'm always practicing surf maps. But I also like to do jump maps as well, because, you know, I don't play soldier as my main class, but it's really good to just jump around and practice air strafing that way. And I'll show you an example. I'm going to use a crit screw. I'll go after that in a second. So, air strafing is just a really basic part of movement that everyone needs to sort of know. Basically, when you jump, you can turn wherever you want. So I can start here, instead of just going in a straight line, I can actually turn myself in a different direction. And so I do that by holding A. I, I, I don't let hold W or S at all. I just hold A, and I jump and turn to the left, or I can hold D and jump and turn to the right. So um, that's <laughs> that's air strafing for you. If you hold W or A, you'll do this really weird turn that kind of looks like you're going sideways. So you really like there's a, there's certain moments where you want to know how to do that, but in general you just want to let go of air D so you get more movement. Hey Mike, what are you cooking? He's cooking chicken right now. He's cooking pasta. <laughs> you want to go over basic stuff? My, I was just planning on going over medic questions, so if you, let me go to the next question then. If you, how do you know if you're going to use a Chris Krieg or a Metagun? So, Metagun is just the basic gun that's the best. You, it takes 40 seconds to charge it, and then when you get 100%, you get an Uber for 8 seconds. And you can make someone invincible, which is just super powerful. So, that's probably the most important gun that you're going to use all the time, because like I said before, when it comes to baiting, you want to be healing the person in front. If you can make that person in front, if you can make your tank, let's say everyone playing like World of Warcraft, if you can make him invincible for 8 seconds, that's super powerful. It's just like, if you can make the person that everyone's targeting invincible, that's what you want. And basically, you use the metagun to protect people who are going to take damage. The Crit's Krieg is important because it's sort of an interesting twist that you can just throw in there to, like, throw them off their, like, guard. Because... The Crit's Krieg charges in 32 seconds, so which is a full 8 seconds faster, which is the full length of the Uber. So you want to go Crit's Krieg when you are going to get crits before they can get an Uber. If they're going to get if they're going to get an Uber before you can get the crits, then it doesn't make sense to use Crit's Krieg because they'll just be invincible and just plow right through you. But whereas if you have the Crit's Krieg and they don't have an Uber, you're suddenly just killing everything. And um, so it's really important to consider a couple things when you're running Crit's Krieg. You have to have the middle point. The middle point on a five capture point map gives your team spawn advantage. You'll notice like if you play Badlands or Granary or any other five CP map, if you have the middle point, you'll spawn at a forward spawn instead of at the back spawn. And so when you don't have middle point, it means that you're on defense. So when you have middle point, because you have that spawn advantage, you're on offense basically. And so it's your turn to push, it's your turn to take, take, be aggressive. 
and that's why you'd want to use a crit Krieg. If you were, um, let's say you didn't have middle point, you're on second point, and you have a crit Krieg, it's suddenly less powerful because you're not pushing, you're actually defending. And when the game's completely even, it's six on six, but they have spawn advantage, so they have an advantage over you, so that you wouldn't want to push into that. So you want to go crits when they have, when you have middle point, and when you know you're going to get crits before they get uber. And, um, <coughs> sorry. That's going to be when both medics die or when you spawn first. What if you have a habit of pressing W for air strafing? You gotta, you gotta let go of W. Um, it just takes some practice, you just gotta practice it a lot. <laughs> I can go over some basic stuff. The, the important part about medic, like, the medic in general, is that he's the most important player on the team. And he's the one who can make everything else happen for the team. He can heal. He makes you invincible. And basically, because of those two key things about him, everyone has to come to him. And if you're running around chasing heals, like I said before, you're not going to be taking certain positions that you need to take. And because everyone, <coughs> everyone in your team is going to be taking damage eventually, right? So it's all about when they take damage, where are they going to go when they take that damage? So as a medic, you always want to be putting yourself in a situation that takes more territory for your team. Because TF2 is a game, the 6v6 game is more about territory and how far, how much ground you can take in like this sort of reverse tug of war. So if you can take more ground and then basically have your teammates come to you, you'll be in a better position. Um, <laughs> Shout out to the teriyaki boys for sure. What should I be calling out to my team as a medic? Um, for most of the teams that I've played Medic for, I've been the main caller. Um, and basically for those of you who are new to 6v6, there's two different things you talk about in your team when you're in Mumble. You have comms, which are just saying like where the scouts are, where's their enemy team, you know, where's their combo, what point are we holding, like, what, at what point are we at? But the other important part between comms is calling. And calling is more of like a command telling your team what you want them to do. So whereas comms will be like scouts on the left, demos on the right, or like there's a trap on garage, calls are like we're holding middle or get ready to push them in 10 seconds or you know they're gonna push into us, let's hold or you know something. You need to give your team a command. So as a medic it's really important that you differentiate between that. Some teams have a lot of of people doing comms and then just having one person like the medic being the caller and other teams have split calling where like multiple people can call like the pocket and the medic and the demo might even call or even a scout so um, when you're talking about what's important to call as the main caller as the medic I want to tell my team you know who has advantage like do we have advantage where are we holding where are we gonna push soon what's gonna happen um, and just give my team commands on what they should do. I let everyone else kind of take care of the comms and telling, feeding me information. I let everyone feed information to me and then I just give out a command for them to do. Um, if you're not the type that is good at talking and playing at the same time, um, some teams have their pocket call. So if you're the medic and your pocket is calling, if your pocket's giving commands to the team, like on a team like LG where Tyrone is just telling everyone what to do, as a medic, what's important to tell everyone is what Uber I'm at, who has advantage, and really just keep track of those two things. Um, and whether or not your team has good health. Sometimes you might have six players up and they might have six players up, but you have really bad health. So, um, yeah, just make sure you're, you're someone, someone has to be a caller though. So like, it's usually the pocket of the medic because you're the center of the team. The, the two combined there, usually the center of the team that everyone is coming back to. So if you're, if you're, if you're like the demo man, you may not always be at the combo, so it's not in your best interest to be the caller, necessarily. So as a medic, if you're the caller, keep, keep to that. Make sure you're focusing on what's going on so you can tell your team what to do. But if you're not calling, make sure you really focus hard, because that's your only job, on calling over percentages, calling advantage, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> for sure. Let me talk more about uh, sort of the game itself and how it works.
Oh, oh, hey, Sokka's questions for me. I take that back. During the scrim, I did backwards running. So that scrim, if you were watching before I started this cast, that was sort of a for fun scrim. Um, if you watch me any other night, I'll be doing like real scrims where <laughs> I'm playing with my actual team. I was just playing with another team. If I were leading with my back, it's because I know that I'm in a completely safe position where I, I want my team to run faster. See, the thing about Medic is that you're the slowest player on your team. Scouts move faster than you, Demo Man can sticky jump faster than you, and Soldiers can rocket jump faster. So as the Medic, my limiting factor is my, is my speed. I, 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 can, I wish I could be in a ton of places at once, but because I'm so slow, I can only be in certain key positions. So um, let's say we're pushing them, was likely why I had my back to them. When we're pushing, I want to go as fast as possible. And sometimes my teammates are reloading or they're not, they don't have good health and they can't move at that exact moment, but five seconds from now they can rocket jump really far away. So I'm gonna leave with my back because I need to get to the whatever next position, the whatever key position I need to get to right right away. And then I'll let them catch up to me. So that's why I had my back turned. Sometimes I'll be in front just for the briefest of moments. You know, like I talk about distancing earlier. It's really important that you keep that distancing because if you're too close to the enemy team, you're gonna be in trouble. But at the same time, when they're like five players down and there's only one player up, I'm just gonna haul ass and just get to the next point as fast as I possibly can. Um, the next question comes from Drake Megrim, which is, what do you think was the biggest transition when getting into competitive 6v6? Um, when I started out as a pubber, I main spy, and I had like 120 hours of spy, and my, next, my second highest was like 40 hours on scout. And the hardest part about getting into it is just the skill gap, so like, if you are just getting into the game, you're going to like hate yourself because everyone else who's been playing this game for so long has like knows way more about this game. And this game isn't like any other FPS that I know of because it's just it's so unique. It's got different class types and projectiles and like the closest thing to it is tribes, which just came out recently, the new version at least. So you know, it takes a, there's like a really big learning curve. It just takes time to learn how to play the game. And so when you're playing, you just need to make sure that you're always playing and always improving. So it, there's no way to get good at it quickly. It's like, it's like playing Dota for the first time. When I started playing Dota, I was awful, and I'm in a team, and everyone's telling me how bad I am. It's just like that in Team Fortress 2. You just kind of got to hop in there and just kind of jump in the deep end of the pool and just start learning. Um, but it is difficult to start learning right away. So that's my, like my biggest advice for someone who's just looking to get into the competitive game is practice a lot of DM. There's DM servers, there's MG mod, I don't know if you've heard of any of these things, um, but you need to work on getting your aim up to a sufficient level where you can compete with other people. And then after that, you can start learning about how the game works, how does the metagame work, um, certain parts. So kind of, this kind of like what I'm trying to do in the series is go over a, cube, a few key parts for each class and then try to bring it all together, hopefully in a, a couple episodes from now. So um, that's kind of the idea is you need to learn what each class does and what their role is and then kind of go into, you know, how does it all tie in together and how, where does the game go from there? Um, what if you... <laughs> Yeah, ex exactly what someone else is messaging right, me right now. You can't just hop into the highest level game because you're just going to get destroyed. A really good place is tf2lobby.com. I'll type it in chat. tf2lobby.com. If you've never heard of it, you just log in with your Steam ID, and then you can. it's really intuitive. You can just pick a game that you want to hop into, and uh, you pick the class that you want, and then it'll auto-connect you to a server where you just play 6-on-6 six six as a pickup game, pick game. So whereas like scrims are like team versus team, Pickup games are just six random people who come together and play against another six random people. Um, <laughs> what toothpaste do I use? I use... Why would I tell you this? I use Colgate. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it doesn't... Does it really matter? <laughs> um, but 
the, one of the better ways that you can learn how to play TF2 is just by watching people who are better than you. My favorite thing to do is watching demos. I'm always watching demos on like, what are the other, what are the other teams doing? What's their strategy? How can I learn from them? And if you can just follow along, if you can just pick up a few key tips from whatever you're watching, just like if you're watching someone play and you're just like, hey, like he does this, he turns his back to the team and I don't. Why is he turning his back? And then you find the answer. That, that'll make you a better player. And you can't eat the elephant in one bite. You got to take one bite at a time. So it just takes some time to learn. Um, another good way besides watching demos is by watching streams. A lot of people are streaming now, so you can start watching them play and kind of get an inside glimpse on like what they're doing and then give yourself a chance to copy it. Like one, peop one thing people will ask me all the time when I'm streaming is like, where are your weapon models? And it's like, well, my weapon models are gone because I took them away because I don't need to see them anymore now that I'm shooting people. And then you pick that up and you're just like, oh wow, I don't need we weapon models either. I've been playing this game for so long. I don't need to see where my rocket launcher, how do I turn off my weapon models? Where do I go from here? That sort of thing is just improving step by step. So, um, I have some extra time right now. I'm going to actually talk a bit about how 6v6 works, and I'm going to load up a demo for you guys to watch while I'm doing it. So I'm going to pick one of my one of the demos from uh, the recent ESCA LAN. Have you, did you guys watch the ESCA LAN? It's for those of you guys who are new. ESCA is the highest level league for Team Fortress 2 in North America. And basically, you yeah, there's a bunch of different other leagues. There's UGC, there used to be CIVO, TWL. Um, but ESCA is now where everything's at. That's where everyone goes to just play and become the best. Um, and it's a pay-to-play league, and there's three different divisions. There's Invite, Intermediate, and Open. And uh, Intermediate and Invite have Intermediate invite have uh, a limited number of teams, whereas open can have as many teams as you want. Um, so the invite teams actually just had a LAN in uh, Dallas. So the four best teams in North America, they fly 24 players to Dallas and play on a LAN connection. So you know when you play in servers, you have like lag and stuff. When you're on LAN, it's perfect. It's amazing to play head to head when you're right next to each other, um, and that creates the best competition. And so you have the regular season, but then you have playoffs, and then at the end of playoffs, they fly the four teams down, and you get to see the best, best plays ever. Um, like your favorite strategies that you wish you came up with, but you didn't. <laughs> um, so while I pull that up, I'm going to answer a couple more questions. Would I recommend the null canceling movement script for Scout? Um, I actually highly recommend the null cancel move script. I'll show you guys what it looks like right here. Uh, so scripts are shortcuts that make playing easier because it does things automatically for you. Um, and it'll, it's like, it's like saving your settings every time. Here's what the null cancel movement script looks like. Gotta make this bigger. Basically, um, it prevents you from pressing two opposite directions, which causes you to stop moving. And you, if you hold A and then you hold D right after, you'll stop moving instead of moving to the right. So what this does is it prevents you from canceling itself. So if, if you hold A and then you hold D, instead of stopping you in place, it'll move you towards the right. Um, this is really long, and I'll put it on uh, my stream later. Uh, I can't really put it in stream right now, but that's basically what it looks like. You can also Google null canceling movement script, and it's really good. It's really sweet. I've almost finished downloading the game right now. And I could have put some music on because that's my style. <laughs> so if you want to download a demo file, I'll have instructions for it later. You, I actually put them online already if you ever guys ever visit Community Fortress. but. Basically, demos are saved 
files of the game that you play. So it's really easy to just go in there and start downloading files and then just watching games. I picked a game between Mihai's Flow, which was the number one team in uh, season 11 in the regular season, and then against the team that actually won LAN, which is LG uh, Leviathan Gaming. Here it is. Alright. And my favorite medic to watch is Pure, because he's awesome. Um, so when you first when you first start playing when you first start playing you spawn in spawn like you just saw and then the objective is to get to middle as fast as you can because the team that gets to middle first will have better positioning on the other team so it's all about this sort of race when you start to see who can get to middle first and um, there's specific rollouts that you do in order to get to middle faster than the other team you start by healing the demo man because the demo man is the fastest class in the game. He has sticky jumps that just cross entire maps. So you heal the demo man, demo man first and let him jump. Then you heal your soldiers and they can jump as well. And then when you get to middle, you'll heal your scouts. So you'll see it right here when you watch Pure play. He starts, he basically just heals the soldiers to mid and his soldier jumps. The other soldier is a equalizing soldier. So he just hurts himself and pulls out the equalizer, which makes you move super duper fast. So he'll heal the pocket soldier here, or the roaming soldier here, and then he'll heal the roaming soldier, which has crit heals. So th they'll both have 300 when you jump in. And right now he's healing the person in front of him, the person who's closest to him. But uh, Flo just won the first mid. And so now that they won the first point, they have a large uber advantage which means that they have more uber than the other team, right? You can see in the, bo in the bottom of my screen, Pure has 97% uber, while uh, the other medic is just spawning right now, he's going to have 0% uber. So because you have uber and they don't, that's a huge advantage to you. You can just push into them um, with the uber. I'll go over the four points I, I talked about earlier throughout what I'm watching right now, but you'll notice he, he follows a few key things. He's following distancing, crit heals, Following the pocket and the heal order. Crit heals take 10 seconds to develop and then scale higher as you get towards uh, as you get towards 15 seconds. I'll just keep the music off if it's hard to hear. So you'll heal at a rate of 72 health per second when you're at 15 seconds out of combat, but you'll heal only at 24 health per second when you're in combat. So really gotta manage these crit heals here. Anyway, he's following his pocket harbor. Pops the Uber. Notice how he's keeping it on a hard blue. Hard blue's running in first. But then he's healing people who are jumping in in front. See how the scout is in front of everyone else? He's keeping the Uber on that scout. He dies, but they still win. Is the in game scout sound too loud? I can turn it down a little bit. Like I said, my first time doing this, so I, I'm still learning how to do it. I'm still experimenting and still messing with my settings. So like you see, you'll heal the demo first, get him to 260 health, the demo man jumps away, he tags the scouts because they're right next to him, but then he really tags the soldier, and the soldier is rolling out to mid. And the reason why you want your soldier to be next to your medic instead of just running away right away is because the medic needs to build uber, and so rather than just having your, demo, your pocket soldier or your roaming soldier just jump really fast far ahead of you, it's better to get him at the same time as your medic and then give him 300 health then give your roamer 300 health, and then jump with that. So, because like I said, the limiting factor on every team is the medic. The medic is the slowest class. So he'll heal the, po the roaming soldier, then he heals the pocket to 300 health, the equalizing soldier. Both soldiers have 300 health now, and now he heals the demo man so he can push across. And right here, right now, that's this is that was the end of the rollout. So now it becomes into the mid fight, which is just fighting in combat. And when you fight in combat, you want to heal the people in front. So you'll see right here, actually I put my, there we go, let me put this over. There, alright. So he'll heal whoever's, whoever he sees the enemies shooting at, he'll be shooting at that person. Or he'll be healing that person, sorry. So you'll see right here, whoever whoever's being shot at, he's going to be healing. Right now, he, the only person next to him is his demo. 
Oh, he dies to a roller. That sucks. Um, so this team comes from season 11. The season 12 has new players, new teams. So while it looks like a bit like mix-up, it's not mix-up. It's actually two t teams before last season. And also the brightness is one of my settings. You can check it in the frequently asked questions on how to make your game bright like this, but it only works when you're not playing an SVP or two, which they weren't doing on land. So right now, after the mid fight is over, one team is going to come out as the as the winner, and that person will have that team will have the middle point. So the team with the middle point has huge advantage on the other team because even if it's six v six, you still have spawn advantage. So because they have spawn advantage, the blue team, which is um, Quantic, is going to be looking to push out. It shouldn't be Quantic, actually. That's really weird that they're Quantic. Oh, you know why? It's because this is the regular season. Alert. The control point is being captured. So right here, they're getting, they're getting really good kills, and so Pure's just hanging back, and now he saw his soldier was getting hurt, so he's going to run up and heal him, but his soldier died. So now, at this point, he's just going to try his best to stay alive, but he died. Um, I guess for you to understand 6v6 fully, uh, you need to understand how the game works on a higher level. So in any competitive game, it's all about who has advantage, and then the person with advantage is going to win. Like in StarCraft, if I have a larger army than yours, I'm going to win. Or if, I, if I'm in Dota, I have more players, more champions together than you have, so I'm going to win. Um, in Team Fortress, there's two advantages. or well, I guess there's four almost if you go that high, but there's uber advantage, which is wh which team has the uber, which team is going to be invincible. There's man advantage, which is which team has more players. Just like in Dota, if I have six players and you only have four, I'm going to win. And then there's health advantage, which is who has more health. And then last one, which kind of doesn't really count so much, is pl is like positional advantage, which is okay. We're, we maybe we both have the same amount of health. Maybe we have the same amount of numbers. Maybe everything's the same. But if I have position and you don't then I can leverage that position to beat you. And that can be height advantage, like I'm higher up than you, I can shoot down at you while you have to shoot up, which is a bad angle. There can be all sorts of things. It's just terrain, just each map, which makes TF2 interesting, has different terrain that you can take and use as your advantage. But the big two, the, the key two, are the uber advantage and the man advantage. So what you're really going to focus on here is when you look down at the bottom of my screen, you're going to see one team has more numbers than the other one, or more team has more uber than the other one. So right now, if you're watching Shade, Shade has a 30, a 40% uber advantage on the other team. So what he, what his team is looking to do is say, I have a lot more uber than you have, and I'm waiting for my spawns. We both have six players right now, and so I'm going to get uber, and then I'm going to push on you. And because you're not going to get uber as fast as I can, I'm just going to push you with my uber and kill everything. Now, uh, those two advantages are really important, but what makes it the best is like when you have, like what, what makes it measurable, I guess. So like, the number one most important advantage in the game is man advantage. If I have two more players than you have, I can push onto your team. And it doesn't matter what points we have, it doesn't matter, you know, who has uber, who doesn't uber, it really doesn't matter. If I have two more players than you, if it's 6v4, I'm going to win. So. Um, it's really important to keep that 6v4 or 5v3 or 4v2 in mind. Whoever has more players is going to win. Um, the next advantage, the uber advantage, comes into play when it's who has more uber... I guess it kind of comes into play afterwards. It's, if you have a 20% advantage, then I'm going to beat you because I'm going to get uber faster. I get, uh, so since uber only lasts 8 seconds and you charge uber in 40 seconds, 20% or 8 seconds out of 40 is 20%. So if I have 20% advantage, I'm going to use my entirety of my uber before you ever get uber. Does that make sense? I hope it's making sense. So a 20% advantage is huge. If you have less than 20%, you really can't do much with it because they're going to get uber by the time yours finishes and they'll be able to protect their players. But if you have more than 20%, that's a huge deal. 20% or more. So 
what you do is when you have uber advantage, it's 6v6, but then you try and leverage that into something bigger. So if I'm, if I have uber advantage and it's 6v6, I'm going to pop my uber, try and get in in the mix, try and protect my players, and if I kill two of your players, then I can keep going even further, because now not only did I have uber advantage, but now I turned that into a man advantage, which is 6v4. So this is what you're going to see right here. Quantic has uh, a large uber advantage, and they also have smart advantage because they have the middle point. Oh shit, I didn't change the camera. My bad. So they have uber, they have a 40% advantage, and they're looking to push into the next point. So you'll see that, remember, you always gotta, remember when you're in combat, you always heal the person in front. Whoever's in front is gonna be the one that they're targeting. So he pockets the scout and pops him in, and he got one kill, and he's looking for two. He got two kills, he got three kills. So because they have a three-man advantage, they're gonna keep pushing onto this even further. Even So it's five on three, five on two now. And now it's over. Does that kind of make sense? I'm just going to keep talking about it until you guys have more questions. Make sure you put questions in chat, I'm always watching. So, um, yeah. And remember, as the medic, you got to focus on four things. Distancing, crit heals, heal order, and follow your pocket. The, the pocket for Shade's team is, is Tyrone. Or Tyrone backwards, you'll see right here. So right now, you'll see that Flo made it to middle faster than uh, Quantic did. And so, like I said before, remember how important that, that positional advantage is? Because they got to mid faster, they were able to deny Quantic from even entering the battle. And that they can leverage that to something bigger, if they do it right. <laughs> See how Quantic uh, is kind of well. They're trading. They're trading kills right now. They're getting in the mix here, and they're looking strong. The flows medic pure died, so Quantic's looking pretty strong here. If only Shay can stay alive, and he doesn't. And so that's it right there. If you're new to TF2 and you want to know what class you should play. Um, I think that you should pick whatever class that you enjoy playing the most. Uh, for me, I started a spy and then I played 40 hours of scout, so I just kind of naturally decided to pick scout because I played it the most and it's my favorite and it seems like the most fun to me. Um, it's up to you which one you want to play. Just pick whichever one's your favorite and then just start watching people who play that class and then eventually you'll get good. Um, you just gotta keep picking up tips. Just pick whichever one seems like most fun to you. Because if you're not having fun, then it's just kind of silly, right? Just it shouldn't be something like, oh, I think that demo man's the best class in the game, so I'm just gonna play demo man. It, it doesn't really work that way. It's more like, well, I think soldier's really fun because I can just rocket jump around like an idiot. Perfect, play soldier. That's fine, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, someone asked, how does equalizing work? Um, I'll explain that on the next middle fight, how equalizing works. You'll you'll understand it when, when I show it to you. I'm gonna watch Pure again, because I like Pure so much. And I did not switch my camera. <laughs> I'm gonna have to teach myself how to do this frequently. Alright, here we go. <laughs> so... Oops, let me change the setting, it's kind of laggy. Alright. So, his pocket is the orange hat. So watch how Pure follows his pocket around. You gotta make sure you keep good distancing, and you make sure you keep following around, just like you're on a train at Disneyland. So, but he's still following the pocket around, but he's still healing other players. So... You gotta keep that in mind. Um, apparently this is a play that they're doing where they're sacrificing soldiers or pushing soldiers in, so uh, Pure just played back and let Harblue kind of do his thing. Um, but, and then Wonderwall became the uh, pocket soldier at that moment. Even though uh, neither team had a medic right here, as long as you have man advantage, it doesn't matter if you had a medic or not, you can still push. 
So let's talk about equalizing soldiers really quick. Uh, let's see. Which one is it? This guy. Hard blue right here. It says suit, but it's hard blue. Um, basically, the equalizing soldier is usually the pocket soldier because uh, the roaming soldier can run gunboats or a number of other things. But basically, the equalizing soldier hurts himself a ton at the beginning of the game, gets himself down really low so he moves really fast, and then just bolts off with the equalizer. And that just makes it a lot easier for the medic to have to pick who to heal and stuff. So, you know, equalizing soldier, just hurt yourself a lot and then run. And then when you get to the end, you'll have crit heals, which basically means you're just going to get 300 health in like 3 seconds anyway. Uh, let's take a look here. Oh, what Harbo's doing? Oh no, I lost the track end. Oh, Wonder Woman? Oh, Wonder Wall's equalizing, that's my fault then. But basically, Harblu does the rollout, which is trying to get to middle as fast as he can while staying with the medic. And then the other soldier, Wonder Wall, is going to equalize. You see him right here. He's got 100 health, which is fairly low. It's not as low as it could be, it could be like 50. But then he gets crit heals right here, and he's boom, he's right at 300. And so he makes it to mid at a, at a decent time, but he'll still have a lot of health. That's kind of the idea behind it. Um, if you're playing, if you're European, you won't have an equalizer because Europeans play with a vanilla um, loadout, but if you're in North America, equalizer is allowed, so. I'm gonna focus back on medics again. Uh, so Quantic has the middle point, and they have Uber, so they should push back and retake their middle point right here. Uh, Flo's trying to take the middle point, and Shade pops wisely. on the person running in front, which is his scout. Yeah, vanilla means no unlocks, correct. Sorry, I should explain that. Right here, Shade's in trouble. Um, he just barely makes it out, oh goodness. <laughs> so now, now that this has happened, Pure now has the uber advantage. So, because he has a 40% uber advantage and middle point, it's his turn to push. He's on the offense. So, they're going to be moving forward, and both teams spawned all six players, so they don't have any man advantage anymore, but they have that uber advantage, right? So, because Quantic knows that, they're going to play really scared, because they know that Flo has the uber. And they pop that uber really early, and then Quantic's job is just kind of spread out and trying to run away from the uber as best as they can. Unfortunately for Flo, they lose all their players, and both medics go down. Um, but this is a decent hold for Quantic, considering they didn't have Uber, and it was both 6 on 6. Alert. The control point is being captured. It, a medic's life... I kind of see what you're saying in chat, is that a medic's life isn't that important, but at the same time, it is important, because if my medic stays alive and your medic goes down, I'll have huge, huge uber advantage. Also, every second in this game matters, because whoever gets uber first is going to be able to use that uber advantage. So, you'll see teams charging uber right here. You see, uh, Kree's gonna be charging on a scout behind them in a second. No, he's not charging. Oh, okay, they decided not to. He's got the sword out. He wants to. He's not, he's not charging. They're just gonna reset, because they know that Quantic has a uber advantage. So anyway, so uh -oh. what you just saw right here was kind of interesting. Basically, because Quantic has more Uber than Flo, they you think that they would push, right? But actually, they can't push, and that's because you're on your last point. And the last point on most five CP maps will cap within like three seconds or four seconds at most. So it's really important that you don't leave your last point because what if you leave and then someone comes behind you and just snags that point while you're not looking. Um, so while you're on last point, even if you had uber advantage or man advantage even, you can't necessarily push off of that. Um, and that's kind of where the nuance comes in where, yes, you if you have two man advantage, you can definitely push, but it's pretty risky when you're on your last point. Can you afford to lose that round on a back cap or someone sneaking in and just taking your last point away from you? You can't. So. Um, because Flo knows this, they're not in a rush to try and get their uber as fast as they can. Because they already know that Quantic has their uber. 
So it doesn't make a difference to them. Whereas for Quantic, they need to get that Uber right away because they need to be able to defend their last point with it. Um, so, in going, so going back to the action here, you'll see that Pure is just getting Uber right now. And Flow, because they know that they're just going to be hanging out and that Quantic can't push off a two or man advantage or Uber advantage, they just sacked a couple players. They sacrificed their Roamer, Wonderwall, and they sacrificed Strugger to see if Quantic would pop their Uber. Um, because if they pop Uber, then Flo will have huge Uber advantage. Um, unfortunately for them, the pop fail the sack play failed, the sacrifice failed. So they're just gonna hold and they have a sniper. And this is one of the few times you'll see sniper in this game. Kinda basically the way 6v6 works is each class is limited to two. So you can there's nine classes, but you each class can only have two of each. And you're limited to one for medic, demo man, engineer, and heavy. And that's because those classes um, are really important or really slow down the game if there's too many of them. Like, if there's two medics, that'd be ridiculous, so many ubers, right? Or if there's two demo man, demo man's the most powerful, most highest damaging class in the game. If there's two of them, that'd be a really big problem. Um, for classes like heavy, it's seen as not fun or slow if there's two heavies or if there's two sentries, it might be too slow. So those classes were banned from having two. Um, the only time, so the reason why there's two scouts, two soldiers, and a demo man and a medic, is because those are the best possible classes you can have. While pyro or sniper may be good in certain situations, they're not the best classes. Um, the reason those three classes are picked is be or four classes are picked is because the medic super important. He has uber, makes you invincible. You can't live without him. Scouts are the fastest class in the game, and they're really high damage, and you need them for capping points and stuff like that. Demo man. Highest damage in the game through his stickies and his pipes, and he's really, really powerful. So you have to have him as well. And soldiers are really mobile, and they can they have high health, like 300 health. They can take a lot of damage. They can do a lot of damage, and they're really good at holding points. So, well, sometimes it's good to have a pyro. Maybe pyro is not very fast. He's he might be really defensive. He might be able to deflect projectiles, and he might be able to protect his medic and stuff. But he moves really slowly. Like a key part of this game is like limited by your mobility, and like I said, you want to reduce that limitation. So by having your medic be able to be the slowest one in the team, that'll be a lot better than having a pyro or something. Since they're on the last point here, it doesn't matter that they don't have a scout uh, flow. It doesn't matter that they don't have a scout because they they don't need a scout. They don't need that sort of mobility necessarily when they're pushing the last point. The last point on a lot of maps is really hard to break, so you need to be able to like break that hold with, with a one-shot in class and really popular for that is a sniper and a spy. Spy or sniper can surprise you and kill a class in one shot so you're giving up that mobility for a one-shot in class but you don't necessarily need that mobility because you're still pushing less anyway you're just hanging out. So they sacrificed their scout for a sniper and now that sniper is going to try and see if he can get a kill. If he gets one kill that's huge for them because Flo has multiple advantages going for them now. They have, um, they would have a man advantage and they would have respawn advantage and that's enough for them to take last comfortably. So right now Shrugger's trying to get a kill. And they got their kill. They got the kill on Clockwork, they traded him for Ruin. So it's still 5 on 5, it's not enough for them to push just yet. They need, one, they need a one man advantage. So. Uh, let's see what else they can get. Let's we'll see what else Shrugger can get. And the reason my game is so bright is uh, you should check my frequently asked questions. So Shrugger's trying to get a kill right now and the rest of his teammates are just trying to hang tight and hold the point as best they can. You'll see that Soup, the demo man, has stickies all over the place. Like on each of the doors. He had stickies. <laughs> um, the, the pocket's trying to hold one of these choke points and they have a heavy now. Once again, they're, all, they're pushing the last point, so they don't need that mobility of, a, of scouts. They sacrifice their scouts, and they have a heavy and a sniper. Clockwork just got a huge pick on, Flo on Ruins, so now, because Flo is one down, they can't push. Um, but you'll notice that even though Quantic got a one-man advantage, they can't push on that either, because uh, whoever team has middle point has the respawn advantage, so you got to keep that in mind.
I'm gonna go back to pure. Um, focusing on my four key points. So Harblue sacrificed himself again. Um, last point's really hard to break, just because it's so hard to push into it and comfortably kill everybody. You know, they have respawn advantage. Not respawn advantage, they have spawn advantage, they can just run back into spawn and replenish their health all the time. So, it's hard to push last without a pick. Pure's trying to heal people as best he can, prevent damage. And his pocket, remember he's just, it doesn't matter if people are getting hurt, he's staying with his pocket, which in this case is the heavy. So he's staying with his pocket as best he can, and his distancing was pretty poor right there. If you, if you saw, he was right next to his heavy, so he basically took double damage. Not only did his heavy take damage, but he took damage as well, so uh, that really hurt him. Let's watch Shade right now. So Shade has not only a huge number advantage, but he also has a huge uh, uber advantage, so they're pushing right now. Building uber as fast as they can, so they can leverage that advantage even more. And once they cap middle, they'll have three advantages going for them, or two advantages, now that they don't have mana advantage. They'll have respawn advantage and they'll have uber advantage. So now it's their turn to push. And... Hmm. My binds aren't working, so I have to keep typing demo UI. <laughs> So here's the situation right now. Qu um, Quantic wants to push the next point because they have a 40% uber advantage. And what they want to do is they want to pop their uber as late as possible. Remember, your uber only lasts 8 seconds. So if you pop it really early, you won't be able to kill as many people. If you can, get, if you can try and get into their territory and pop uber as late as possible, you'll be able in a better position to kill more people. So you'll see them taking it really slow right here as they're trying to push into the next point. But that's because they have time to kill. They have 40%, so a very large advantage. They just want to clear these traps and try and get in deep before they pop their uber. Uh, Clockwork somehow got a really great pick on Wonderwall. And so now, Quantic's trying to push with their 2-man advantage. And, um, see what happened right here, as you'll see in the bottom, they still have uber. But Pure now has an uber as well. So, they lost their uber advantage. They're moving too slowly to capitalize on it. But now they have a two-man advantage, so they're just going to use that instead. So here they pop Uber, and trade Ubers with the other team. And he see how he's trying to keep good distance, he's trying to keep far away, he knows where the danger's coming from. And... Um, like I said before, when it comes to baiting, because he already started doing damage to the demo man, he thought, okay, well I better just finish the demo man, because that's my best chance at killing somebody. Um, even though the medic was juicy target right next to him, he's still going to shoot the demo man. And so, Shade knows that he's just going to heal the demo man, because he's the one taking damage. Um, right now it's 2 on 2, but Quantic has the two most powerful classes in the game right now, so they're looking pretty good. Wonderwall knows this, so he needs to try and kill the medic, and Ruin gets the kill, Wonderwall goes down. So now it's Flo's turn to be aggressive. Flo has a 20% uber advantage, so they're looking really strong right now. Joker, I'd love to talk about flashing, that sounds good. I'll talk about it and this next uber. Hold on a sec. So right now, Flo has 60% uber advantage, so they're just going to push in right now. Even though they don't have respawn advantage, they have that's you know the, you got to remember the two key advantages, uber and man. So they have uber advantage. They're going to push in, and in this position, you got to ask yourself, what does Quantic want to do? And because I'm right here, I'll go like this. So if you're if you're Quantic right now, what you're thinking is okay. Flo has tons of uber advantage on me. The only way we're going to possibly get away with this is if we force your uber really early and then back out. And the best and TF2 has a ton of chokes on all the maps. So each map will have a choke where the, where you're coming out of garage or you're coming out of the top. And if you can hold those chokes and force the uber there, you can back away into a larger area, spread out, and try and um, kite that uber. 
So, right here, if you're the medic for Quantic, you know that you need to get that Uber as fast as you can, but you also need to try and get out alive. So, Quantic makes it out, or Shade makes it out alive here, and so now they have a 70% Uber advantage, so now it's going to be their turn to push. They got tons of kills right here, and now they're gonna keep pushing. Right. The control point is being captured. Uh, so one of the questions asked earlier is, why doesn't the medic hold on to Uber and then use it on his next life? Um, <laughs> it's it's kind of an interesting question, but but like you gotta remember the advantages, right? Uber and man advantage. Man advantage is always going to trump Uber advantage. So even if I had Uber and you didn't have Uber, if I have 6 and you only have 4, I'm going to push you and I'm still going to win 6 on 4. Um, so basically the way it's going to work is if you milk your Uber, if you just hold on to it and let all of your teammates die, you're going to lose numbers. Like, Flo is going to pop Uber and Quantic going to hold on to their Uber. All of Quantic is going to die then and then Flo can just keep pushing through even though you have Uber. You gotta remember that uh, Uber only lasts eight seconds, and if you have more players, that's that's way more important than eight seconds of invincibility. So, while it may seem like a good idea to just hold on to Uber for a long time, you gotta make sure that you keep your priority state, which is keeping your teammates alive. And that goes on to the next question, which is what Joker asked earlier, which is how does flashing work? So, Ubers last eight seconds, but if you change your target and you Uber someone else for a little bit, if you flash someone else you're going to lose about one second, one and a half seconds of time off of your Uber. So if you flash like three or four people, you're going to be in big trouble. Your Uber's going to be gone like right away. Um, so what you want to do is when it comes to flashing, a lot of medics run into the situation where they're healing somebody, right? Let's say they're healing their pocket soldier. And then and the, the enemy team is pushing you and you're healing your pocket soldier. And your pocket soldier takes like... 250 damage and only has 50 health left. Even if you pop Uber on a 50 health pocket soldier, it's only gonna last 8 seconds and after the Uber comes off, he's still gonna have like 50 health, right? Or like maybe 80 health or maybe 100 health at most. So Ubers are most effective when they're used preventatively rather than like saving someone. So rather than thinking of it as like, I need to save him and keep him alive with my flashing of the Uber, it's more like where are they putting out their damage, and how do I prevent that damage from ever happening in the first place? Because if you can stop the damage from even happening, then that'll save you time. Remember, medics only heal at 24 health per second. So if you can just stop the 80 damage sticky from doing damage, that'll save you 4 seconds of time. Or if you can, like, if the scout's coming in and trying to shoot you, if you can just shoot, if you can just protect the person who's going to take damage from the scout or from the soldier, that'll just save you tons of time. See, the hardest part about Medic isn't that, oh, well, healing people is really hard, or like, I don't have to aim, so this is just a really easy class. It's more like every second matters. Every second that I have to deliver health, I have to pick where I'm going to put my health, because I only have a limited amount of time to, to deal health. If I had all the time in the world, who cares what, who I heal? Who cares about heal orders? Who cares about crit heals? Who cares about who I'm going to heal next? But since they're doing the same thing to you, they're putting tons of pressure on you, you need to pick wisely who you're going to be healing next. So remember, when it comes to Ubers, use it preventatively and pr protect people who are doing damage. Uh, protect people from people... Protect your teammates from enemies who are trying to deal damage. So, and that's usually the person in front. The, whoever's in front is going to be the one that they're looking to kill, so you need to protect that guy. Uh, I hope that makes sense. If you have more questions about it, let me know. But you don't want to hold on to Uber. Keeping numbers, keeping men, is more important than uber advantage. Otherwise, teams would just hold uber all day and that'd be really boring. That'd be a really boring game. <laughs> so right now, Quantic's trying to move into the second point, and they have a huge, huge uber advantage. Right there, did you notice how Shade turned around to heal his scout? It's because his scout is coming from behind the battle. And so he has crit heals. So it's really important. You just tag your scout really quick. Give him that crit heals. Give him the 150% health that he needs before you start killing other people. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes crit heals isn't the most important thing, but in that case it was. 
Um, so Quantic's moving forward with their man advantage and their uber advantage, pushing last. Pop their uber into last. And all, see, although Quantic had a, although Quantic had a tremendously large uber advantage, Shade was not able to save all of his players. He lost three of his players. So because of that, now Pure not only does he have a huge uber advantage, but he also has man advantage, and that's gonna change the flow. Oh, I used that shouldn't have said flow. It'll change the game crazy. Like <laughs> Mihai's flow is gonna be able to push really well off of this, and you'll see. So what is Shade trying to do right now? He knows that Flow is going to be pushing really hard, as fast as they can, trying to take as much territory as they possibly can. So he needs to try and get out alive and try and get Uber as fast as possible. Right here, he's not going to be able to stop second point because his number, his uh, teammates just respawned right now. So his main objective is, okay, I need to get Uber as fast as we can. And what is, his teammates are trying to do is trying to slow down Flow, trying to spam, trying to hold chokes, trying to slow them down as much as you possibly can in order to get your uber because if you can get uber by the time you get to your middle point then you'll be able to defend it with an uber and we're gonna see that right now hopefully you know shade is at 50 percent right and it takes 40 seconds to get an uber so if they can stall for 20 seconds they can get this uber and defend middle point but no shade is trapped out and flow made a great play and shade is stuck behind the enemy team and he's gonna die and this is huge for Flo, this is ridiculous, and now Flo has not only a huge uber advantage, but a huge mana advantage, and they're going to be able to take middle point easily. I don't know, oh they're turning around because they have to stop the back cap. But they killed Clockwork and now they're going to push, and they're going to take middle point, and my stream is lagging, or the, something's lagging here, and stuff is stuttering. No, it's just it's just purest computer. Okay. No, it's just my, it's just my TF2. Well, that's fantastic. I'm, I don't know. I'm watching Banny. I just like watching Banny. Okay. Uh, actually. Should have said later, dog. Okay. So, looking at pure right now. I hope this is pure. Yeah. So Pure is trying to get Uber as fast as he possibly can, so that way he will be able to use his Uber advantage to push the next point. So with 40% Uber advantage, here they go, they're pushing right now. And here they go, jumping in. They gotta slow down, wait for their medic, because the medic's delivering the Uber, delivering the crit heals. Okay, right here is really key. So both teams have an Uber right now. And if both teams have an Uber, it's gonna be trouble for the team that pops first. Okay, so as Quantic, you're the defending team. You wanna force their Uber as fast as possible and then milk your Uber. Milking means just holding onto that Uber and just holding it as long as you possibly can. And if you can milk it for three or four seconds that's like the best thing that could ever happen because now you have four seconds of invulnerability that you can use to kill the other team and create some sort of man advantage that will give you a chance to win so if you can milk that uber long a long time you can create that advantage but like i said earlier you don't milk it too long and lose players because that'll be a problem for you so what is um the attacking team trying to do the attacking team yeah, right here they know they're gonna have to pop uber first and but they have a couple things going for them right now. They have, um, well actually they only have one thing, they have respawn advantage. So because they know that if they lose any players, they're going to respawn faster than blue team's players, they can, that's their turn to be offensive, it's their turn to push. So they have to pop first, but they're going to respawn a bit. So basically at this point right now, they popped uber first and their main objective is to get uh, Quantic to pop their uber first and prevent them from milking it. So they're able to, they're, they were able to force the uber fairly early, and so that creates an even uber situation again. Um, hopefully we'll see another push and I can explain the same thing again in real time. But that's kind of the idea, it's just, if you're on offense, you pop uber first, you want to get them to pop uber as soon as you possibly can.
<laughs> he was just having fun here. Getting his Uber. Okay. So that's a that's a one round for Flip. Um this is halftime right now. So in North America, the way that the rules work is it's first to five. Whoever wins five rounds wins the game. And halftime happens at whichever team wins three rounds first. Or twenty minutes, I think. I think it's twenty minutes. Um, so if 20 minutes expire, or if you win 3 rounds, then it triggers halftime. And blah blah blah, this is halftime, it's really boring. Still halftime. Still have time. If there's any questions, let me know. Oh, okay. So one person asked, how are you supposed to win if you pop first and they do a really good job of milking? So, let me turn this little buzzing off here. <laughs> um, so, when you're on offense, you have respawn advantage, so it's your turn to push, so you push.